So I assume you're showing the first slide. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, my background is geomechanics and uh, coupled processes modeling. So I, I did a lot of work on coupled TH thermal hydromechanical processes in different kinds of applications, such as geothermal, nuclear waste, carbon sequestration, and so on. And today I'm, I'm going to just focus on one specific project in geothermal, so that's the Northwest Geysers EGS demonstration project, which we worked on uh, for for some years yeah, some years ago. And uh, so, in this project, really uh, coupled thermo hydromechanical processes are very important, and uh, this is also related to induced seismicity, which are triggered by pressure and temperature changes during this underground injection, water injection into a, into a steam reservoir and there's also steam production. So here you can see a figure where they're drilling the wells for the, for this or extending the wells for this for this geothermal project. And uh, so this is a group. So this is uh, the, the project was actually managed by the Calpine Co Co Corporation, which is uh, the field operator at the Geysers. And then we at LBNL did some <clears throat> modeling and analysis of, of field data. So you can see that there is a group of people here, Pierre Jan and Pat Dobson, as you hear, heard before. Don Vasco worked on the INSAR data and Larry Hutching worked on the seismic tomography data. Uh, so you can take uh, next slide, please. Showing the, the coupled THM processes in Yoloka media. Uh, so <clears throat> these are very important processes in geothermal. So you see the couplings between thermal, mechanical and hydraulic processes. Uh, so for example, in this case, we are injecting fluid in, into the subsurface and, and you, get, uh, you get changes in effective stress that affects the mechanics, but you also get uh, cooling Due to the due to the cold water injection, you get thermal expansion or thermal contraction that impacts the mechanics, and that in turn can change the permeability and, and porosity so that impacts the fluid flow and so on. Uh, you can go to next slide, showing the a, a schematic of an engineering geothermal systems. So there was a report from the 2006, a famous report uh, from MIT that that. Uh, concluded that actually could be 100 gigawatt of available competi uh, competitive capacity could be provided by EGS in the next 50 years. Uh, however, to do this, you actually need to, to have, have an economic uh, EGS. You may have to create a cubic kilometer sized reservoir and then produce the energy from this without adverse envir environmental effects, such as induced seismicity. Uh, so this is a real challenge, and uh, so Northwest Geyser EDS demonstration was one of the EDS demonstration products launched by the Department of Energy to actually study this, these effects. Um, so so you, you can see to the right the figure, so you essentially need to create a cubic kilometer of a, of a reservoir to and circulate fluid in, in, that, in that volume. Uh, next slide, showing the geyser geothermal field. So this is the, the uh, world's biggest geothermal energy producer, uh, currently about 750 to 800 megawatts, and it's located in, the, in California, north of San Francisco. And this is actually a huge, <clears throat> quite huge area. It's about, it's, it's about uh, this uh, kind of footprint you see in gray area in the figure up to the left. So that's the Geyser geothermal field. And this it's uh, about 20, 20 miles long and five, five miles across. So it's, it's a very big area. And it's a vapor dominated hydro, hydro, hydraulic system. So you can see to the, to the right, the, the cross section through the reservoir. So you have uh, 
on top you have a cap rock, and then below that you have what you call what they call the normal temperature reservoir. So that's a steam dominated reservoir at the temperature of about 240 degrees C. So that, that's from that reservoir they produce most of the steam. And then below that you see an, uh, what they call a high temperature zone, which is uh, high temperatures, about 350 degrees or, or even more. And that is also a little bit low temperature. Uh, you can also see the, the uh, on the figure in the cross section, you see the dots. These are actually induced seismic events that happens uh, during, uh, especially during injection. They have, they have seen many seismic events. And uh, this is actually created by the water injection that is required for economic production. So if, if they wouldn't inject any water, the, this, uh, the, the pressure will go down and, and, and the production would not be economic anymore. So they are actually importing water from uh, treated wastewater from nearby communities to inject in, into the system. However, the water injection then causes seismicity, which is a con concern to the local community. Uh, next slide. So here you can see again, gaseous production, injection and seismicity. You see again the, this uh, gray uh, footprint to the left and you can see to the right, you can see the induced uh, or the seismic events recorded during one year. So these are uh, about 19,000 events. However, however, most of them are very small. So you see that there, uh, it says uh, 271 uh, events magnitude larger than two and 13 events magnitude larger than three. So those events larger than three probably can be felt in the nearby com communities. So this is a concern to the nearby communities. You also see the blue dots on this figure. These are injection wells, so the induced seismicity tends to be co-located cool where they have uh, in injection wells. Uh, we can take next slide. So here you can see the again the, the Geisha steam production injection and seismicity. So here you can see the several things in, on this slide. So the you see the evolution of uh, steam production, water injection and earth, and uh, micro size and earthquakes. Uh, so this goes from 1965 to 2008, and you first follow the red line on top. So these are this is the steam production. So steam production uh, started so, so in, in the 1960s and uh, peaked around in the 1980s, and then goes down. And uh, this is this goes down because probably they, they think because the reservoir pressure goes down and they don't have enough. Uh, water to, to, to produce steam. Uh, so what they do then, they, they actually re-inject water. So that's the blue line. So there's water injection going on, on for some time and then <clears throat> that's increasing as a function of time. What you also can see, the uh, green line in, in sort of in the middle between the production injection data. So these are seismic events bigger than 1.5. And you can see that this, this number of events is very well correlated with, with the injection rate data. So when you have, for example, around 2000, you have an increase in injection, injection rate, a peak in, increase. And this is because they actually, they actually uh, installed uh, more injection from uh, local communities where they took treated wastewater and, and, and injected, so much increased injection rate. And, and then you see uh, also an in increase in, in induced seismicity during that time. What you see on top, you see some, uh, you see some, uh, some symbols on the top. So these are earthquakes magnitude larger than, than four. And you can see there, are, there is a number of them. And of course, this uh, will have some concern in the local community who, who don't, uh, because magnitude four is, could probably be clearly felt by, by them. Uh, yeah, so that, that's a really uh, an, an issue. Uh, they induce seismicity for, for all the uh, thermal systems, I think. We can go to the next slide. 
So the next slide shows the Northwest Geysers EGS demonstration. Uh, so this is a uh, this is a uh, taking place in the Northwest Geysers. So, so it's on the on the top of this uh, gray footprint, or, or to the uh, on the top. <clears throat> and uh, this is a part of the geysers that was abandoned in the 1980s due to high level of corrosive and non-condensable gases in the steam production. So they couldn't really produce steam very well at the time. Uh, however, they uh, also uh, discovered in this area a high temperature zone that is relatively shallow, uh, where there are temperatures uh, of over you know, 300 degrees C, but this, this is a low permeability rock that is uh, at uh, three kilometers depth. So the idea with this uh, Northwest Geyser EDS demonstration project is actually to reuse some of those wells that was drilled in the 1980s and actually extend them further down and then uh, do uh, a continuous water injection to lower those uh, corrosive and non-condensable gases and at the same time stimulate rock fractures to enhance steam production from this area. Because this is something they have seen that if they do continuous water injection, they can actually lower those kind of non-condensable gases in the area and then produce steam, high quality steam. So that that's was the idea. Uh, so this is an uh, actually an EDS actually to expand production from the margin of an existing field. Because on top of this uh, field, on top of that that. Uh, we have the normal temperature reservoir where, where they usually where they, where they produce steam in the regular regular production. But you can see that the when you go down to one well here going down to 11,100 uh, feet. So here you can see that your temperature is up to 400 C uh, at the bottom of the well. So this is very, very high temperature. And so this is a challenge to, mo to model this. Uh, you need uh, to model the multi-phase flow heat and transport system and then we link this to geomechanical simulations. Uh, go to next slide. Again, show the product pro product motivation. Uh, so you can see that the two wells here. So these are the Prati 31 and Prati, Prati State 31 and Prati 32, which are the, the at the center of this EGS project. There is also another well, Prati 25, that's kind of included in, in that area where, where you have uh, where you, for, for this EGS project. So that's another production well that, that was part of this project. So the product motivation is to increase production and improve mass replacement in this area. So mitigate induced seismicity. So if the shift injection from the southeast to the northwest geysers, so in that area is, is uh, there is no is away from the population. Uh, they can abate the uh, non-condensable gas content with, in, in this high temperature reservoir and stimulate the wells for enhanced uh, permeability. Next slide. So this is the, the uh, kind of overview of the, of the product, project. So what we did, uh, uh, we have a kind of a cop, uh, central coupled reservoir mechanical model for, for uh, stimulation, planning, design and validation. And, and this is supported by field field monitoring or, or field field monitoring and, and characterizations. You have a 3D geological model that has been constructed. You have the 3D uh, tomography and high precision location of, uh, of micro earthquake MAQs. So this is done to actually to actually try to see changes in the reservoir when, when you do the stimulation. And then uh, bottom to the left, you have inside analysis of ground surface deformation. So this is to, you, you might see the surface deformation on the ground surface during injection. And then we have to the, to the right chemical isotope analysis of production fluid and fracture matrix interaction, which is, is also important. Uh, next slide. So this is show one type of the data. So this is the INSAR surface deformation. Uh, data. So we, we uh, <clears throat> so th these are challenging in this in this area because the terrain is very difficult. You have a forest, and you have uh, you have uh, you have steep hills with with some landslides and, and things like that. So it, it's very challenging. So 
uh, to the to the you see to in the middle you see the C band results from from the European satellite satellite 1992 to 1999. Uh, on and in the in the area of uh, of this EGS project, the terrain is so difficult, so you cannot have you cannot actually have many points where you, where you can see very clearly surface deformations. But if you go to the right, there are some new data from the X band satellite that was available at that at, at time and and uh, with the last one and using some special technique to actually to analyze this data. Uh, we uh, we had the uh, we got the much much better resolution and much actually actually able to actually use this kind of data for, for the for the product. Uh, next slide. So here you see the injection and seismicity at the EGS wells for this EGS project for one year injection from October 2011. So you can see uh, again the to the starting from the left you see the gray footprint of the EGS of the, of the geysers and then you see in the middle you see that the, there is a square around the around the uh, in the northwest geysers around the injection wells so these are this is a five by five kilometer site where we where we actually did a lo local detailed monitoring of the induced seismicity seen up to the right and if you see it down this uh, you see the figure where the from going from September 2011 to to August uh, or to September 2012 so this is the evolution of the injection rate and seismicity during this one year of stimulation so the injection rate is in uh, blue and then you can see each dot, each black dot is a seismic event. And to the right, you can see the magnitude going from uh, 0.5 up to 3. So most events are uh, below magnitude. I mean, uh, it's, it's around uh, 0.5 to 1.5 or, or the 0.5 may be the lower detect detection limit here. But you can see there is a, there is a correlation between the injection rate and the and the number of events and the and the actual magnitude. So you can see from beginning they injected at about 400 gallons per minute from October 2011 to December 11. <clears throat> and then in uh, then they in, ramped up the injection to about 1000 gallons per minute and you can see a, an increase in the number of events and, and the magnitude. And then again they go down and then stop the injection. And what you also can see that before October 2011, there was there was virtually no events recorded in that area. So that means that uh, this is really induced by the by the injection in this case. So that's that's one important data we have. Uh, next slide. So in the next slide, we see the how we use this kind of uh, uh, induced seismicity data to to actually image the underground, so the seismic tomography here. <clears throat> so what you see to the to the to the to the left is the P wave velocity changes in in this area uh, around the injection well. So you can see there is a significant this this is a significant uh, there is a reduction in P wave velocity and S wave velocity which indicates a significant softening in, a, in this cubic kilometer rock volume. Uh, also, if you look at the P wave attenuation, S wave attenuation, so, so this is actually done by other people in our group, by Larry Hodgson, uh, and uh, evaluating this data. And uh, so we see the P wave attenuation that was maybe interpreted as the liquid water, uh, image of the liquid water injecting into the steam reservoir, and then to the right down we have the S wave attenuation that may be related to shear damage in this zone. Uh, so these are these are some interpretation of, of this uh, of this data. Uh, but we, we want to do a coupled thermohydromechanical model to actually model this this kind of changes in, in the in, in more physically. So go to the next slide. So here you can see the geomechanical modeling approach. 
Uh, so we have uh, we're looking here at the coupled THM processes. So here we use a simulator based on TAF linked to a geomechanical simulator. So TAF is our in-house multi-phase flow simulator that uh, is uh, that has been used in geothermal to modeling geothermal systems for many many years since the 1980s and. Uh, and, uh, but it does not have, uh, it can multi, it can simulate multi-phase fluid and heat transport, but it doesn't have the capabilities of geomechanics. So that's why we linked uh, this code to another geomechanical code to actually be able to evaluate the geo geomechanical changes. So here we use a uh, quite simple approach actually. So we, we first calculate the stress changes as a result of cold water injection into this hot reservoir. And then we look at the stress changes and evaluate the potential for induced seismicity, considering a rock frictional failure. And what we know that is the, the rock mass at the geysers is actually close to frictional instability just by the tectonic stresses themselves. So a very small stress change induced by injection could actually cause uh, shear, shear activation and, and micro -slip, micro slip event. So here we actually assume that you have, because we, this is a highly fractured reservoir, we assume that you have you can have fractures of any orientation in, at, at this small scale and could, could uh, achieve a shear slip on, on that, on such a fracture for, for a small change in, in, in seismicity. Uh, next slide. So here you can see the model prediction of the EGS creation uh, uh, for, from THM and induced seismicity. So what you see to the to the left is the uh, is the model, the entire model of the of the system. So this is a 3D model, and we include all the the important uh, prop, uh, rock properties here. So the cap rock, the normal temperature reservoir, 240C. You have the, what we call the Hornfels, a high temperature zone, and then below the, there we have the, what, what is the fell site, so very, very high temperature zone. And then we, if we focus uh, around one of the injection wells, uh, or around the injection wells, during this, uh, which was uh, in, during this injection of uh, one year injection, but here we look at the, at the simulated results of the three months of injection. So what you can see, you can see the pressure up, up there, uh, the contour of the pressure extending one kilometers from the injection well of the three months. So these uh, pressure changes are real or small. It's, it's uh, you, you actually, we don't have to inject water. We, we actually pour water into, into the wells because the, it's a steam, it's a steam reservoir and it's, it has relatively low pressure. And so you just have to pour water in, into the wells and, and you pour liquid water into, into the steam reservoir here. But uh, you, get the, you get this change in the steam pressure that extends quite fast out in the reservoir. Uh, it's a small, so the, the uh, further, further out at one kilometer, you may have a, a pressure change of, uh, of uh, one megapascal. And near, near the well, you may have pressure changes up to eight megapascal. Then you look a little bit to the left, you can see the cooling around the injection wells. So the cooling is really strong. It's about, I think it's, it's uh, 90 degrees cooling or something. And, uh, but it's, it's actually very limited around the injection well. So not, not extending a, a kilometer like, like, like this. So it, it, this strong cooling actually causes a strong mechanical changes in, in this area. Uh, but it's localized around the injection wells. Then you see down, you see the EGS extent, which you actually predicted uh, based on, on this uh, on this uh, simple model of, of rock frictions. You ex you extend, uh, you predict there uh, should be about one kilometers extension of the of the stimulation uh, uh, stimulation. So if you click one more time, I think the the field data will appear on this slide where you see the monitored seismic events and you can see that those actually is actually expanded also about one kilometer. So this, this shows the a good, uh, I think a good prediction of, of the EGS extent from, from this 
model an analysis. So if you go to the next slide, which shows the interpretative modeling and monitoring to evaluate the changes at three kilometers depth. Uh, so <clears throat> top graph shows the injection rate in red and then dash lines, which is, a, which is a prediction at the time. And then you see below, you see the evolution of the in in uh, in a green line, you see the the uh, pressure data, and then you see the square dots are the the uh, modeling using the, the model. So here you can see uh, this is a pressure monitored in the injection well PS in the monitoring well PS31, located uh, almost uh, every one kilometer away from the injection well. So there was there is a quite fast response in in the pressure, but we use this kind of data to actually further cal further uh, calibrate or, or correct, uh, calibrate the uh, or constrain the, the permeability and porosity in the system, and to actually match this uh, evolution of uh, of uh, of pressure, we actually had to increase the porosity somewhat in, in the in the model to 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 match the data during uh, as a as a result of the stimulation. We think around the around the injection well. Down below, you see the evolution of the displacement, ground surface displacement as a function of time. So this is also data that used to constrain the the, the mechanics of the of the of the reservoir. So the the for example the Young's modulus and 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 the pressure changes will impact how much surface uplift you get. So here you get up to one up to about ten millimeters of of ground surface uplift during during this uh, injection. So these are large scale feed data which you use to, to characterize the, the system. Uh, we can go to the next slide. So the next slide. Next slide shows uh, a fracture network identification from seismicity. So as you saw before, I uh, had uh, the model. Uh, we had kind of a kind of a homogeneous uh, model of the, of the system to predict uh, uh, the extent of the of the EGS uh, system to about one, one kilometers extent. Uh, but when, if you look very detailed in the evolution of the daily evolution of the seismic seism after you increase the injection, you can see that the seismic actually follows some linear features uh, going out from from uh, from the inject injection wells. You have the dots that shows actually where you have a major fractures intersect intersecting the wells. So these are kind of what they call the, the steam uh, uh, zones where they can produce steam, steam, a lot of steam from, and uh, these are permeable fracture fracture zones, and uh, and then you you can see the these features. So what you interpret this as actually is a permeable faults so, or fracture zones, and there is so you see this in the blue line, and there is also uh, the kind of a orange or. or so this is a, a low permeability barrier. So we see that we can see this from uh, looking at monitoring wells in the near, near in the neighborhood that there is not much pressure responses, and we actually use this to to again here you can see the the extent of the on the of the stimulation zone around around this injection well, and we actually use this to actually construct a structural model of the system, where you actually have some. Uh, major uh, fractures or fracture zones or or, or fractures that uh, in, intersects the, a network of those fractures that uh, in, intersects the system so this is uh, this being included into a model uh, to actually predict uh, to model the long term long term evolution of, of the system and uh, we also i mentioned that we have the effect of pressure and the effect of cooling uh, so again that the uh, here we look at at the one location about 100 meters from the injection well. We look at we look at the pressure and temperature responses. So if you look to the right, uh, you can see the evolution of the pressure as a function of time and and temperature. So there is a, in, a slight increasing in pressure 
after about 100 days in, in this point uh, located 100 meters away from the injection well. But there is also a strong drop in, in temperature here. Go, going at from 74 days to 108 days, there is, a, there is a drop in temperature. And this actually causes strong impact on the local stress field according to the, to the model. So you can see in, in the graph at the bottom, there is, uh, there is uh, here you can see the evolution of kind of this, this stress, uh, this, the, uh, the uh, sigma, this is, this, this is the sigma, the maximum compressive stress over minimum compressive stress is kind of a measure po of uh, potential for, for shear rupture. So it, if it goes up to about uh, 3.13, which is based on the more cooling criteria, you actually have a rupture. But you can see as soon as you get this cooling, this uh, this uh, stress path moves away from from the from the rupture rupture stage. So it's actually in this case the cooling actually stabilizes the the, the uh, system to move it away from from fractures from uh, sharing. So this is a really complex. You can see this is a complex response of pressure and cooling. And we also looked more details which you see in, in the next slide, uh, where you actually could see, look at these effects again. So you have the fluid pressure front that extends, uh, that triggers seismicity far away from the injection wells. <clears throat> if you look at, at the cartoon to the right, you can see that triggering pressure front that extends uh, kilometers away from, from, the, from the well and, and goes uh, Quite quickly, you, you can see as soon as you change the injection rate, you see a response. You see a response in the induced seismicity over that area. Then, if you look very close to the injection well, there is the cooling, cooling zone. And what you then could see, if 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 we look at the induced seismicity, we actually could see a quiet zone develop around around the injection well, uh, where you actually have no induced seismicity. And uh, this is, we think caused by this uh, cooling that tends to stabilize the fractures in that area very close to the injection well. Uh, however, you also see in this case when, when you get the cooling, you get the you, you get the cooling shrinkage, so that could open ex pre-existing fractures. And you actually have in this in this zone, you actually saw the highest, the biggest uh, permeability increases during active injection induced by cooling pressure uh, enhancement. So th this is what you see from the from the modeling uh, interpreted and, and we then look at the induced seismicity to, to kind of correlate our modeling with, with this. So to summarize, you can go to the next slide uh, summarizing. So the key to the success of making EDS a factor of the US energy mix is actually to learn how to effectively stimulate a rock mass on a, maybe on a kilometer scale and how to effectively design, predict and monitor such a system. Uh, go to the next slide. You see that uh, uh, in this product, actually, we, we did uh, successfully integra integrated modeling of monitoring of the kilometer scale reservoir stimulation at the three kilometer step. We used uh, coupled thermohydromechanical modeling and we use uh, different kind of data such as INSAR, micro seismicity and seismic tomography to actually follow the evolution of, of the system over time. Uh, induced seismicity maybe the is a most effective tool maybe to image such a reservoir stimulation, but needs to be carefully managed. You don't want to cause uh, events that could be damaging to the or, or even try to avoid to even have a events that could be felt by the by the local population because that can be a showstopper to, to any any product. Next, uh, so coupled geomechanical modeling of the field data can be used to understand and manage induced seismicity. Uh, this this is we have a kind of demonstrate demonstrated in this project and the next. So now there is ongoing research actually on the this uh, frontier observer or forge project which is the currently the Utah forge uh, that the DOE has uh, dedicated to a site for EGS research so there there will be continued research on, on this on this area uh, next slide 
So the references, if you want to read more about this, what I presented, these are two pres presentation, uh, two papers that kind of provide an overview of the project. So the first one is about more about the field data characterization in response to the injection well injections. And the second one is more on the modeling and interpretation of, of the data. And uh, in there you can find many other uh, present, uh, papers on, on details of, of the system. So I can then take questions if there, if there are any. Uh, okay, uh, thank you Dr. Johnny for your time. Let's uh, go to the questions really quick. So the first question from uh, Lutana Ozriki, I believe it's on slide 13. Uh, he's asking, is the coupling fully or uh, sequential implicit? Uh, so 13. <laughs> so it, so the, the coupling is sequential in, in, in between these two codes. So because, yeah, flag 3 d is a commercial code, so we don't have really access to the, to the um, source code. And uh, so, so this actually will require uh, sequential coupling. So, so this, this is, yeah. Okay, the second question from Dr. Ali Razai, postdoc in uh, University of Houston. Uh, are all wells in this uh, EGS reservoir are vertical wells? Yeah, they are vertical, but they are kind of deviated. They are not exactly vertical. So, so, so they are, they are. Uh, you saw in some of the figures that. That, uh, for example, if, if you look in, in figure in uh, slide nine, you can see from from the top. So they, they are vertical, but they are, they are they are not exactly vertical. They are deviated from, from the from vertical. Uh, OK. Uh, thank you very much again, uh, Dr. Johnny, for your time. Can I ask a question? Yes. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Yes, go ahead. Okay, now, and my question is, uh, in order for you to stimulate uh, well, uh, your thermal well, um, have you ever thought about the, the product that should be used to do an stimulation in such a high temperature, knowing that if you're going to do hydraulic fracture, you're going to use a polymer. Some polymer does not resist such a big temperature. Uh, and if you're going to use any acid and, and solution, and uh, have you ever thought that the most of the water is going to evaporate? And uh, what would be, what have you thought about this? Uh, in the future, if you need it to stimulate a well. Uh, so I mean, I mean, the the geysers is a, is a kind of a special special system where you have a, actually a steam reservoir, and you the the stimulation is done by injecting liquid water in, into this steam reservoir, and and. Uh, you have some. I mean, there are there are existing fractures. There there are like in this, in the steam reservoir, 240 degree. There is permeability. What we want to do here is actually to, over time, when you inject this kind of liquid water, it moves downwards over time, very slowly over time. Like over, each year, they they may move down slowly over over time. The, this liquid zone, and you stimulate the, this rock. This um, Low permeability rock in, in the high temperature zone that is up to up to uh, three three uh, four hundred degrees. So it's it's uh, kind of different. I mean, uh, for for uh, I know at the forge they're gonna they probably is, that's maybe more. It's a lower temperature system where you have a liquid fully saturated liquid system and, and maybe initial low low permeability and and you want to stimulate fractures and, and they are actually going to try maybe hydraulic fracturing technology similar to what, what they do in oil and gas industry and this and the wells are more like almost 
or maybe sub horizontal. So maybe maybe that will be studied in in the, at that site using different ways. I know I know they have uh, acid has been used, but I don't think it has been that successful. Maybe Pat knows more about that. I don't know. Okay. 